me welcome to the show. I want to ask him about masks. I want to ask him about COVID-19. He is a psychiatrist and a, an addiction specialist. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Rasan Lindsay. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me, Karen. Thanks for coming through. Look at you. So last time you were here, and, and mm-hmm. I want to have more mental health professionals on here because I think, you know, COVID-19 is very, very stressful, and black people suffer trauma uh, on so many levels. And I was riding my bike today, and I was thinking about, you know, how, there were so many people at the park. So I rode my bike to the park, and there were a lot of black people. And I live in a very mixed yes. area. There were a lot of black people at the park working out. They were walking. Some people were jogging. They were riding their bikes like I was. And I was like, you know, the notion that black people are not – we don't work out and that we don't take care of ourselves is a myth. It's a lie because we over index today out there at the park. And then I was thinking, what impact does stress have on our ability to be healthy? Because being black is stressful as all get out. Well, stress and in relation to actually being healthy, it actually impedes your ability to be healthy. If you can't get out of the house, I have patients that have social anxiety or generalized anxiety. They can't even get out of the house to go work out because their level of stress being around people. But if you add that layer of being black in America on top of it, it's a real struggle for many people. But just like you, I've been going to the park and we are over indexed. And last time I was on your show, I talked about taking care of your numbers. I want to stress that again with your listeners, take care of your numbers. I'm talking about blood sugar, blood pressure, and heart rate. And the best way to do that is going to the park and to getting some cardio, because that's the thing I think is going to be the most protective when we keep going through this COVID-19 into 2022. Oh, he just said 2022. Now, what people don't know, last uh, time Dr. Dr. Lindsay was on, he, was, he, he still looks like the, the picture of health. But since then, <laughs> you battled COVID-19. What happened? Yes. So I think I was on with you in April. So everything was fine. You know, Arizona, we maybe had, what, 7,000 numbers. It was great. We were golfing. Everything was open. We were having a great life. We were like, come to Arizona. So in May, um, there was one night after work. Actually, I wasn't working. This was a few days after my last shift. And around 7, 8 o'clock, I felt a little tired. And then it hit me. I told my wife, I'm going to bed now. And I woke up at 7 or 8 o'clock the next morning. I sleep about six or seven hours, maximum. I'm up. Sun comes up, I'm up. I didn't get up for, I slept for probably 11 to 12 hours. I never do that. And the funny thing is when I woke up, I still felt a little tired. You would think after 12 hours, you should be rested, but I wasn't. So that day I felt a little tired. The next day after that, a little bit less tired. And I thought, everything's great. Then three or four days after that, I noticed my smell was gone. And I didn't notice it until my kids said something. My, I'm walking down the hallway with my kids, and they say, do you smell that? And I said, no, I don't. I don't smell that. And the next day I said, hmm, that's strange. I literally, Karen, put my face in the trash can to see if I could smell it, the stuff that was in the trash can. I could not smell it. So then a red light went off because uh, I have a lot of friends that are in the medical field. They talk about smell and taste. That's a big red flag. So I said, okay, I'm going to get tested. But the problems that a lot of places are having, I got tested, say, on the 26th of May. My test didn't come back until June 1st. So that's a problem because there's a big lag. But when I went, there were probably one other car there, nothing. So I tested positive. I said, okay, I'll quarantine, stop going to work. But then I needed to have a negative test to go back to work. I go back to get tested. There's cars everywhere. Everyone's getting tested. But thankfully, they got it back within a day. And guess what? I was still positive. So I was wow. still shedding virus. So even though I felt fine, CDC has these guidelines about, you know, if you're three or four days after your last symptom, think about it. I never had a fever. I never had chills. I still went to play golf. I was running, swimming, hiking. I was doing all these things. And I'm still COVID positive. I had that one day where I felt fatigued. So you have to get tested. And if you still test positive, you can still test positive for 14, 16 days afterwards. So I didn't return back to work until I had a negative test. And I missed a few days of work. What about your household? You got wife, kids, you know, like you. My wife and two kids, thankfully, all tested negative. And here's the funny thing. None of my contacts tested positive, not one. And 
there's another component to this whole thing where you test positive. It's embarrassing. You have to go back and track. How many people was I exposed to? I had to send out about 50 text messages to people. I mean, it's almost like you have an STD. You say you, someone you've been you with has been exposed to this, so you may have been exposed to COVID-19. So I had to tell all these people, none of them had COVID-19. So, but I do work at a hospital, and, you know, patients come through. We've had, you know, positive patients, so that's the only way I can think about it. I was diligent with my mask, and I heard a caller earlier talking about not wearing a mask because it's uncomfortable. There are horror stories that are more uncomfortable than wearing a mask. And if you allow me, I'll tell you one. Please tell us one. I know of a person who got COVID-19 and couldn't go to work. He got it from his father. His father got it from a coworker. They're burying the mother this week because she also got it and she was compromised. That's uncomfortable. So don't worry about wearing your mask and not fitting or feeling uncomfortable. You're really, and it's not about you. You're protecting other people because guess what? There are, so many people that are asymptomatic don't know they have it. And if you're not wearing a mask and they're not wearing a mask, they're going to give it to you. But if you have it in asymptomatic, you're going to give it to somebody else, maybe someone you love, and then it might be too late. So wear your mask. It's simple. But as you're saying that, and it just makes this, this mathematical scientific sense, there, the level of selfishness, and I don't know, it, it's stunning to me. Because what I mm -hmm. heard that caller say was, I don't really care about anybody but me and that yep. that disturbs my spirit because you're willing to go into a store with older people babies young people and because you're uncomfortable wearing a mask you may be walking around like dr Lindsay. if you could see him he is a fit man he's got pecs and biceps and he looks like you know an adonis and he had COVID 19 and probably didn't even show other than being tired and not being able to smell you look fine. That was it. That so was it. I, I just, I don't understand the selfishness. And as a, as a doctor, psychologically, ex can you explain what, what that is? What is going on in the mind? Well, psychologically is one thing, but Karen, you know, it's become political. Let's just be real about it. It's really become political. And some people won't really take this serious until it affects them. And it may affect them in a worse way than myself. It may affect a relative that you're really close with, and they may die. And then someone will then start worrying about themselves and other people. But a lot of people won't react until it affects them. And in this climate that we're in, in this country, it's more political than anything. And I'm sure you've been on with many callers before uh, that talk about it. But the medical professionals, if you see the medical professionals, the professionals that are on TV, they keep it real. They talk about the science, and you can't deny the science. And I said 2022 because there's something called herd immunity. We're nowhere near herd immunity. Herd immunity talk, is when. What, what is that? What? Because so, we see that with other with other like measles and chickenpox and mumps mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there are some countries that believed in herd immunity. Um, I think Sweden was one of those countries. Uh, they, so herd immunity is when a population is infected with, say, coronavirus at between 70 and 90 percent. And it's pretty much known that, you know, that many people are infected. It's safe to go out and, you know, do what you need to do on a daily basis, keep the economy open. But if you look at Sweden and surrounding countries, at the point maybe two months ago, they have 4,000 more deaths than their neighbors. So was it worth it for those 4,000 people that you lost? versus wearing a mask. And the reason why I say 2022, herd immunity, like I said, is between 70 and 90% penetration. Right now we're at eight or 9% penetration. Even though we have the most cases, what, 2 million something cases, we're at 8% right now. Maybe with the hope, help of a vaccine, if the first one works, we can actually gain some herd immunity that way. But remember, there's gonna be people that won't take a vaccine they're going to think it's a hoax. They're not going to believe in it. So those people are going to still be exposed. So it's going to be a long time till we get to herd immunity. Now, what about antibodies? Do you, because there's, you know, different, I'm, I'm reading some people can get it again if you've already had it. The antibody mm -hmm. tests are flaky and shaky. What are your thoughts on that, Doc? So I got the antibody test as well. 
and I do have antibodies. So that's a good thing. So the science says that if you're a person that is asymptomatic and you get COVID-19, you're going to develop some antibodies, but your antibodies may not last long versus someone that had a lot of symptoms or some symptoms. So my antibodies may not last till the end of the year or till the vaccine comes out. So I could theoretically potentially get it again. So I still wear my mask. I still take all the precautions. I wash my hands. I wear scrubs to work. I do all the things I can not to bring it back home to my family and my friends. So just because you have antibodies doesn't mean you should, you know, let down your guard at all. Now the mask. As, as, a, as a doctor, a medical doctor, you're a medical professional, mm-hmm. Dr. Rasan mm-hmm. Lindsay. Um, the notion of breathing in your own CO2 being more harmful than breathing <laughs> in... Co- I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I just need somebody with some sense to, to make some sense of why that, that rumor <sighs> is, is taking hold. So... I am a board certified psychiatrist. I went to med school. I had to do a surgery rotation. There are some surgeries that are eight to 10 hours. When's the last time you saw a surgeon pass out from having too much CO2? It just doesn't happen. These are myths. Myths similar to coronavirus is not gonna be as bad in the heat. You know that's wrong. We're in the summer right now. Our cases are going up. So there are so many myths out there. It's just a myth. Ask a person, would you ever go to surgery and let someone work on you without a mask? No, they wouldn't. So masks are protected. They protect you and they protect other people. So wear them every day, everywhere you go. Please. Okay. We just had uh, Kenny the Jet Smith basketball. I know. I know. Yeah. I know you like. I'm a Carolina fan. Sports. I know. Yes, that's right. That's right. He played there. Uh, and and as as you know, sports is coming back, and a lot of athletes are opting out, right? For yes, they are social ju- social justice reason. We've seen a lot of football players, NFL players, that have tested positive. We've seen a lot of mm-hmm. baseball players now tested positive. Uh, the NBA is going to the hotbed right now, which is Florida because they have the most ridiculous mm-hmm. governor outside of the governor of Georgia, outside of the president of the United States. They might be the, the triumvirate of stupid. But <laughs> he's, he's in Florida telling people not to wear masks. He's not going to mandate yep. it. And the NBA is trying to play at Disney. Ah, yeah. It, <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. The NBA is going to try it. Um, PJ is already playing Soccer, it's already planned. They're outdoors. I was going to say. Difference. Right. Big difference. The choice of Florida was probably before these, you know, the surge of numbers. And it's hard to turn that cruise ship now that it, the season is upon us. I get that. But I would tell them, because I work with a lot of NBA, uh, NFL and Major League Baseball uh, athletes. And you are correct. Athletes are getting it, too. But here's the difference between athlete. Their lung capacity is very different than the average person. They do cardio every single day. I would be shocked if I hear of an athlete dying of COVID-19. I would be more likely to hear that one of their relatives Mm. died from COVID-19 that they may have gotten from them. And I think that's what some of these players are saying. I don't want to give it to my family. And I heard uh, they were talking. I know you said uh, Stephen A. Smith was uh, talking about, you know, being secluded from your family. And I think that's what's going to happen with baseball, too. They're, they're going to be on lockdown. You're going to go to the hotel, and you're going to go to practice. You're going to go to the hotel and to the game, and that's it. And it's really to protect your family because family members, I do know horror stories in, in, in uh, sports where family members are getting it, and some of those family members aren't doing so well. Those things don't make it to the front line. But they, they are right in saying that it's a risk, and I would be very fearful um, about going to the in, uh, Florida as an NBA. And if you're going to do it, they can't go anywhere. They just go from court to hotel, and that's it. Carl Anthony Towns' mom died. Um, t- Sebast- Sebastian Telfair, his mom also died, I think, uh, as well. And, yeah, this is, a, this is serious. So uh, I thank you for putting the seriousness on it, uh, Dr. Rasan Lindsay. All right. Psychiatrically. 
and I'm going to stay on this because I have not really um, done, an, in my opinion, enough to, to, to keep people sane. I mean, I, I, I try every day, you know, to bring in, mm-hmm. you know, different elements. But I, I, I need a prescription for somebody out there right now uh, who is anxious about going back to work because I know New York is starting to open up. I know yes. that, yeah, Jersey, the cases are down. Things are opening up. I personally am anxious about going out, I, and, I, and I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing for the last several months. I'm not changing. But people now are a little nervous about putting their toe in the water. What can you yes, tell someone about, are. you know, when, when people say, come on, come to the bars, the restaurants, everything's open, the gym, and they're anxious about <laughs> Well, it. not in Arizona. <laughs> Everything just got shot down again here. Um, but ways to relieve stress. Um, one thing that I talk about with COVID-19, you have to take care of your body and your mind. If, it, if it's meditation, if it is uh, a religious uh, environment, talking to your pastor or doing a Zoom call with a friend, you got to be creative. One thing that I found that raises the level of stress with COVID-19 is that people are too plugged in. I, I did a talk with a bunch of adolescents through an organization called Jack and Jill. I'm sure you're uh, familiar with it. Yeah. And the teens talked about feeling overwhelmed, anxious, and stress. And the one thing they said that makes them the most stress is that 20, probably about 12 hours a day, they're on social media, they're looking at TV, they're on the radio, they're consuming everything about COVID-19 and the racial pandemic. All the racial tension is hitting them all at once. There's no outlet. There's no sports right now. We're going to get that back pretty soon, but there's no outlet outside of COVID-19 and racial tension in this country, and they're overwhelmed. So you got to unplug you got to take care of yourself. Try to get six to eight hours of sleep a day. There are many different products out there that people can use. And, t- and it really is dear to my heart because I'm an addiction psychiatrist. Too many people are turning toward bad things. People are turning toward alcohol and drugs. My unit is full. We're full of alcoholics right now because too many people are treating their anxiety with alcohol as opposed to other products that you know I'm associated with, uh, like livebetter360.com. Yes. We have many different products that can actually help with anxiety, and these are hemp-derived CBD products. I would say use something that can help relieve your stress that won't cause a side effect and won't cause addiction. Listen, uh, you know, I love LiveBetter360.com because I'm associated with it myself. uh, Tell me about it. I use the products. I use the Aroma Theory every day because, you know, I have Uh dry, ashy, eczema, uh, and it really does work, and it's beautiful. Uh, and and you got the gummies and uh, the, the excuse me the the uh, bites, the the pre- and Have I you tried, tried those? Cause, no, because I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous about what it. Do you think, what are you nervous about? I don't know, Doc. Help me work through. Okay. Help me work through my anxiety talk, around talk, putting putting CBD or hemp derived uh, uh, products in my body. Help me understand. Okay. Are you ready? You ready? For I'm this ready. Thing? All right. We're gonna do a tree diagram. All right, we're going to talk about cannabis is at the top. Cannabis species, okay? Then you have three subspecies under cannabis. We call the first one cannabis sativa, next one cannabis indica, and cannabis ruderalis. Nobody likes, we call them Rudy. Nobody likes Rudy because he doesn't have enough THC or CBD in it. So THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, the component that gets you high. CBD, which is non-psychoactive, the second highest chemical component, it doesn't have a lot of those. So nobody cultivates or grows rooting. But indica, or they call her indie, because it puts you in the couch, makes you really relax, makes you fall asleep. And there's a thousand, you know, different strains under there. Then you have cannabis sativa. We call her Tiva. She gets you, you know, hype at the party, gets you excited, euphoric. But then you have something, if you go down one more tree diagram, something called hemp. Hemp is the textile that sort of built this country. We have presidents that have harvested harvest this uh, uh, product. We have a lot of people that were slaves in this country harvested this product. There are black farmers in Kentucky that have had these farms harvesting hemp for decades and generations on this product. Hemp is very special. It's different from the flower and the bud that people smoke. Hemp is a product that has very low levels of THC, 0.3% THC. Karen, you can't fail a drug test 
with 0.3% THC. Athletes that are Olympians, the Olympic Committee has allowed Olympians, the most scrutinized athletes on this planet, to use CBD. I'm sure SiriusXM is going to allow you to use a product of that CBD. And I think your concern is ingesting it, yeah. right? That's your concern. It's not going to get you high because CBD has no psycho. It's the non-psychoactive component of marijuana, but it has a lot of medicinal properties. It helps with pain, seizures, inflammation, all anxiety. We're actually doing a lot. There are a lot of studies on schizophrenia, believe it or not. Um, I know patients that have schizophrenia that are being uh, treated with CBD anywhere from, say, 50 to 300 milligrams a day, and it's helpful. And it's all about side effect profile. you got to trust it. It's all about side okay. effect. All right. Well, I, I'm sticking with my aroma theory, which I put on my knees because it's got CBD. In it. uh, it's got CBD in it, right? So that it, I'm getting it, it topically. So you're telling you me ingesting in. it. Th- th- okay. All right. I said last time I was going to try it. I guess I, I guess I have to. But then I got to talk about because I've been so anti. I'm pro CBD. I'm pro the business, but I'm anti people using anything to. Just me personally. Let me not say anybody else. But I just think we, we, we run to ad- addictive things. Right now during COVID-19, yes. if you're an alcoholic, Lord have mercy. You know, liquor store oh is still God. open. Like, and you're by yourself? This is horrific. We've mm-hmm. seen so many suicides during this period. Yep. Young people killing themselves because yep. there's no, like you said, no outlet. Drug, drug usage has been through the roof. So I just, I just don't want to ever promote it. But if you're telling me this is not a drug per se, I, I guess I have it's to. It's not a psychoactive drug. Active drug. It will not okay. cause mind-altering change in your body. It will not cause addiction. You think of addiction. Addiction is a compulsive behavior or compulsive use of a substance that you continue to use despite a negative consequence. There's no negative consequence with CBD unless, I mean, scientifically, if you consume between 5,000 and 15,000 milligrams of CBD, which is literally impossible to get that much in your body, you will then have some problems. But you can't do it. It's impossible. Right. Okay. You would never take 15,000 milligrams of CBD, ever. And, and what, I lo- what I love is that, you know, medically, you know, there are a lot of people in the cannabis space. But they're not, yes, they psychi- they're not psychiatrists. There are even some doctors that are doing it because I know several that are in the cannabis space but they're not psychiatrists yes. who work with addiction. So, you know, it kind of puts you in that seat of, like, trust that your job is to not have people get addicted. So, yes. And okay. I, I think that's why the guys asked me to be part of this company. I mean, if you look at Live Better 360, we have multiple doctors involved in this company. We've got pain specialists involved in this company. And when it came to mental health, they turned to me. I am the wet blanket of the group. I do. I look at all the articles and I say, whoa, 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 that's too much. <laughs> you can't go there. This, this is how much it's supposed to be. And this is what you should do. Any more than that, you might have some problems. So that's my role. I get people off of drugs. I love that. Uh, Dr. Lindsay is in the building. Let's go to TJ in New Mexico, which is right next to Arizona. Hey, TJ. Hey, what's up, Karen? Hey, what's up, Doc? How you hey, doing, TJ? How you doing, first. man? Hey, first things first, Karen. This it seems like you have a stigma. Um, I do. Just go, stop being a square, Karen. Just go ahead and try it. And the Let's THC, see. like he, I mean, as far as the CBD, like he said, it's purely medicinal. It, there is no buzz. They sell them in the stores out here in New Mexico. They sell them everywhere. Okay, TJ. Just try it, so, Karen. why why you want me to try it, TJ? Why you want me to try it? Because. Because I listen to you from day one, and you're a control freak. You got to let go. Listen to the doctor. <laughs> I've been found out. Hey. Oh, my God. He just read me, Doc. Uh, you may right. be on something, TJ. I haven't uh, met with Karen that much, but you might be on to something there. So, uh, so, TJ so did wait, mention, I, what's the question? Go ahead, TJ. Hello? Did I said it's up? always 420 somewhere. Hilarious. Okay. <laughs> I see you. Can I speak on that? Can I speak yes. on that a little bit? Go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Lindsay. So <laughs> THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, it's the mind-altering side. I don't want you to get it wrong. THC does have some medicinal qualities. Helps with insomnia. We all know that. Um, it can help with 
cancer patients. It increases appetite. There's something called wasting syndrome. Patients that have uh, cancer also have severe nausea. It helps with nausea. Um, some strains actually help with treating anxiety. That's true. But here's the problem. Excess. There's no such thing as moderation with some people. Some people won't use just regular THC. Some people want to use these things that have potency levels of 70, 90% that you can't get out of the dispensary. You got to get it off the street. And those are the people that eventually come see me um, with paranoia, delusions. They look like they have schizophrenia. I'm not, I'm not joking with you. There are a percentage of people out there using high potency forms of THC. And it's made from the resin. If you look at uh, the flower itself, there's this sticky resin, and they um, basically condense that down into something called wax or dabs. And that's the high-potency THC. People are out there using that right now. The problem is excess. So I'm not saying go use it. All I'm saying is if you are using it, do not use it in ex into excess or these high-potency products because you will have problems and eventually come to see me or someone right. like me. So, so TJ, expose some. I, I am a compulsive person. So when you know yourself, yeah, Jeremy, I'm compulsive. A little OCD, mm -hmm. a lot of OCD, very compulsive. And I am a control freak because I know if left on my own devices, I will overindulge in everything. And so <laughs> I do not, I don't even want to tip. Like I, I can't just eat a couple of handfuls of popcorn. I got to eat the whole bag until it's done. I can't just, I know me. So I'm not even trying to put myself, Doc, in a position where I if I like something that I, I know I won't be able to stop. I have, everybody has a vice. My vice, I'm from Ohio. If I say OH, what are you supposed to say? I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. I -O. O -H I -O, what the hell? I what is that? <laughs> Everyone knows that? A, every from, everyone from Ohio knows that because everyone okay, from, Ohio, from is Ohio State Buckeye fan. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. Rutgers is there, right? We don't talk about Rutgers. Rutgers is there. They're in the Big Ten, right? Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I won't go there. Yeah, I don't talk about Rutgers. Um, yeah. But my vice are Esther Price Chocolate Covered Cherries, a company in Ohio. I only buy it once a year. I buy a box for everyone else. And I buy a box for me. And the box is gone in two days because that's my vice. If I have one, it's going to trigger a response to me that I have to eat the entire box over two days. And my theory is, why spread it out? Why not just get it over with? pull the Band-Aid off and eat it all now. But it's, that's not going to be a problem with CBD. You're not going to get that okay. fuzzy feeling. Or it might just be the dessert. And maybe it's the dessert part that you're talking about. Right. Probably. Right? Okay. That might be it. All right. But y'all got a lot of different things. People, y'all can check it out yourselves. If, you, if you're into this, live better. I'm going there right now. 360.com. I guess I got to order. All right. So this is your thing. The the The... Yeah, there's four products on there. There's four. Okay. You, you see the, the one that is interesting is the one through a company called Vita Global. They're out of California. I think when you had Dr. Woods on, uh, right. he was talking about the sublingual troche, which is basically a lozenge. You put it between your cheek and your gum. The thing about this is that the, the onset of action is anywhere from five to ten minutes, and it lasts six to eight hours. So they have one for sleep. You want to sleep six to eight hours. If you're playing a round of golf, you want pain relief for about five to six hours. So these things are, they get in your system fast and they stay around. Um, but if you want something more localized, you have other products called Renew. I think you see Renew on there. Uh, yeah, those are creams and gels. All the athletes, a lot of athletes are using those things. Um, I've used it because I have a herniated disc. I have sciatica. Uh, acupuncture was great, but... You rub that on your back, you get, I would get pain relief probably for three to four days. Now think about using another medicine that you get at the pharmacy that can cause gastric ulcer. I don't want to pop those pills every single day. I want to use something I can just rub on, last for a long period of time, and won't cause side effects. It's all about side effect profile. So what's the difference between the sublingual in terms of effects and the pretzels that I just ordered? <laughs> so it's about the onset of action. Onset of action. So the pretzels uh, is considered technically an edible. And what we know about edibles, edibles can be tricky. So edibles onset of action could be anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. People run into mistakes because they say, okay, 20 minutes in, I don't feel anything. If it's a THC, if you have a product that has right. THC and CBD in it, um, they say, I don't feel anything. So what do they do? 
take another they one. They pop another. They take another one. And say another 10 minutes later, they still don't feel anything. They take another one. But 60 minutes later, it's all hitting you at once. Right. They're essentially jacked up. They are sitting down, looking at the sky. They're, they're sometimes even nonverbal. But that's what you got to be careful with an edible. So with that little bag that you have of the infusion, now which one do you have? Because there's two products. The infusion there's, bites. Uh, the, the CBD. Almond uh, pretzel, toffee the, bark yep, the, the almond to- toffee pretzels. Okay. It's beautiful. There's also the other product you may have, the PB&J Thumbprint Cookies, which is a collaboration with William Ray L.A. I'm sure you've had him on the show. Um, those products, if you just take one, see how it goes, and don't take another one for another hour. Just take one for that day. Take it at the middle of the night uh, before you go to bed and see how it feels. I guarantee you, you're not going to get high. It's impossible. All right. All right. I'm, 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 you know I got your number, so we're going to have that conversation. <laughs> All right. And I'm so happy that you've recovered from COVID-19. You look amazing. You can smell and Thank taste you. again. And uh, and be safe, though, because Arizona is a hotbed right now. And, uh, like, I we know don't want to talk I, about that. Pray for you. I got to pray for you. Where can people reach you, Dr. Rasan Lindsay, if they're in Arizona and they want to come see you? If they want to come see me, I don't technically have an office. I work at a hospital. So if you're coming to see me at my hospital, then That's you've a had a problem <laughs> with alcohol okay. or opioids and I'm treating you. You don't want to come see me. Okay. Um, but you can find me on Instagram at Rasan Lindsay um, and also on my Facebook page as well. All right. That's R-A-H-S-A-A-N, Lindsay, E-Y. Thanks for being here. Please come back. Please come back. Dr. Lindsay. Thank you for having me. I'll be back. All right. And get his products at livebetter360.com.